Hello, and welcome to Chapter 5 of the Driver Rehab Program. Today, we're going to look at signs, road markers, signals, and communication. We're going to look at colors, shapes, and the meaning of traffic control devices. We're going to recognize what a regulatory, warning, and guide signs are. And we're going to follow instructions provided by signal lights. We're going to look at how to interpret roadway markings and effectively communicate to others on the road. And we will be looking at a AAA book. This might not be how yours look if you obtained a book uh, for the class, but this is the book that we're going to be looking through today. Uh, again, we're going to start with a chapter prequiz. Uh, the traffic control devices used to communicate their messages. And again, here is the book that we're looking at. I apologize. I didn't get the um, chapter moved or the PowerPoint moved around just correctly. So there it is. Now we are on to the chapter pre quiz, which is traffic control devices used uh, use blank to communicate their messages. And when we're looking at that, we're going to kind of think about do they use uh, color, shape, wording and images? Would the correct answer be all of the above? We'll talk about these more at the end of the unit, but for right now, it gives us something that, something to think about. The second question we're going to look at is how does a driver know if an interstate highway runs east, west, or north, south? Um, one of the answers could be by the route number, by the sign shape, by the sign color, or by the sign placement. And again, we'll look at this at the end to figure out what the correct answer is there. Moving on to the next one. Is going to be a flashing yellow light means a driver should a stop b yield to another roadway user facing a flashing red signal light c slow down and proceed with caution d maintain their speed and move away from the area. And we're going to look at number four, which is a double solid yellow line means drivers traveling in both directions may pass with caution. Drivers passing and traveling in both directions are prohibited from passing. The driver is approaching an intersection or it is a shared left turn lane is available. Number five, road users are allowed to use blank to communicate with each other. A, a horn, B, hand signals, C, headlights, D, all of the above. Number six. Oops, excuse me there. We're going to move back. And it's not going to show me number six at this point in time. So we will stop with number five. And we'll work the other questions in as we continue on. So our next PowerPoint here is showing us um, that traffic control devices can have different meanings. We have three basic types of signs. Again, they are regulatory, warning, and guide. Traffic signals also indicate the right of way and road markings provide guidance to drivers. So we're going to start with traffic control devices. This is called the Dutch reach. So we're looking out as to uh, someone is trying to exit out of the back of the car here. We can see the bicyclist is coming up and that's going to be a potential problem. Uh, in Michigan, we have rules and role and regulations in place to help drivers and bicyclists utilize the roadway uh, together in partnership. Uh, so this one here is showing that potentially we have an issue. And if you can see what that is, I would like you to make a small notation. And kind of explain to me what is the problem and where could the bicyclist go? Here we can see we have a red traffic light. We have a sign for pedestrian crossings over on the right side with the triangle that says yield to pedestrians. The rectangle box under the car is going to show us a right turn arrow. And then we have white lines that are next to this black SUV on the left side of the screen. 
And those are regulatory lines to show us where our lane is. We can see that those are going to guide us to put, tell us where to go at intersections and help us to work through them safely. These signs tell drivers, among other things, where they are, where they're going, and how to get there. Signs, signals, and road markings provide information about laws, hazards, and the roads themselves. They also direct drivers in uniform, predictable ways to slow, stop, merge, or maneuver to help keep traffic moving safely. So as we can see, if we look at this PowerPoint here, we can see an orange sign that tells us it's right lane closed ahead. We also see orange cones. Those we will come to understand are construction uh, signs and uh, cone activities so that we know that coming up ahead, there might be a construction zone where there is a right lane that may be blocked. If you look at the right side of the screen, there is a yellow diamond with a person uh, that is telling you there's a pedestrian crossing there. And then there's another sign that's right next to that that's showing you uh, Mystic Seaport restaurants and businesses. So it's kind of guiding you to what you would find as you continue down the street. And then the very top slide is showing us directions on an interstate or a highway to tell us which way we want to go and to help us pick the correct road movement. Now we're going to get into traffic signs. This picture here is an example of multiple signs we may find out on the roadway. We have at the top left what is called a yield sign. You can see that's a regulatory sign. Uh, as we move across to the top row, those are another um, group of regulatory signs that we will find and we'll talk about in just a little bit. A more familiar one might be in the second row that spells out STOP. And of course, you probably know that very well as a stop sign. The signs below that are warning signs. We know that, that in case that they are yellow and a diamond shape for the most part. Uh, each sign tells us a little something different and we'll get into that just a little bit more in, in future slides as to what they mean. The following on the next row down for the where the orange signs are, those are construction signs for the first four on the left. Then we get into a school crossing, the one that looks like a little house in the middle of that row. We can see the no passing zone, that's called a pennant, and we'll find out a neat little story behind that one in a little bit as well. Below, we have interstate signs, basically markers to tell us where we are on a roadway. And if we go down all the way to the bottom, we can see our regulatory signs of a speed limit of 15 all the way to 65. Here we can see that this yellow warning tells us we can only go in one direction. And again, we're gonna work on these yellow signs here. They're going to show us if we choose the top um, diamond that has nothing in it, that one's just showing us it's a warning sign. But if we would look to the one right next to it on the right, that's telling us there is a sharp curve to the left. The next one is showing us there's a mild curve to the left. And then you can see it shows on the next one over that it's kind of a zigzag um, type shape road. Uh, as we move around all the way to the end on that row, you can see that maybe your road curves back over itself. So they're telling you that a big curve is coming up. And then the row underneath, again, more warning signs. Again, we'll review the regulatory signs. This means do not. Uh, so it's helpful for you to see that when you see a sign like that. For example, the one next to it on the right says do not enter. We know that we should not go that way. It's an incorrect position and an incorrect way for us to go and travel. So we should not enter in there when it says do not enter. 
This one here is a very famous sign. That means no U-turn. If you were to see this at an intersection, we would understand that we could not turn back around the way we came. We would have to pick a new route and work on a safer way to get back to the direction we were if we were going the wrong way. Back again to the book cover as we change um, our focus here for just a moment. So here we have word road messages on here. You can see that it's telling us information from left to right and top to bottom. So it's telling us that it's Route 7 East. Um, that's going to take a little bit of understanding when we get out on the roadway, which direction we are traveling and could be helpful to use a Garmin um, or a mapping application on your phone to help you know if you're going in the right direction. The information underneath the seven and the east tells us a street that's coming up or a couple of streets that are coming up to help us feel more comfortable in our navigation as to where we're going. And we can see this one here is a, the no U-turn I talked about. So you can see the median there, maybe that white car that's on the left side pointing at us in this slide might try to turn in this area and turn back around and go back the other way. But if we do that, we might be heading the wrong way down the street. So we don't want to do a U-turn right there. We want to go up and use the proper intersection. And here we have a few more signs. Uh, this, we probably have been riding in cars for a while and maybe at this point in time, your parents have asked you, what does this sign mean? What should we do here? Just to kind of help you to understand what are all the signs and the information given out there. So here again, is an example of a few signs you might see out there. Again, we have a yellow warning sign on the top left. The next one says U-turn, yield to a right turn. So this one would allow us to do a U-turn as long as there was nobody trying to turn in front of us. So the next one is a blue one that we're looking at and that one we're actually going to find on a railroad crossing. It's an information sign where if we were to have a problem or maybe a breakdown with our car, we could call and let them know that maybe we're on the train tracks or really close to the train tracks and we're having an issue and maybe we could get some help. The next one to the right is a construction sign again, that construction orange, and that is showing us that the left lane is going to end and merge into one lane there. The, the next row in the middle is it's telling us a state law that if we see an emergency vehicle on the side of the road, such as an ambulance, a fire truck, a tow truck, we should be moving over or slow down to increase their safety. The next slide to the right in the middle is uh, chevrons. So they are showing us that a curve is coming up. The next one is showing us three different opportunities for a lane. So we can see it says through lane, which means the cars can drive through. The next lane is a special vehicle or bicycle lane and only bicycles should be in there. And then they're giving us information that the third lane is a curb lane and there should only be parked cars. There's no traveling. Again, we have another sign telling us where to go in a specialized area. And then going down to the bottom, we have a green guide sign, which is helping us to direct us to uh, a certain location and a certain exit. And once again, construction sign um, and to the right. And I wanted to focus a little bit on the circle one. We have probably come to know that one is a railroad crossing. And that's telling you that a railroad crossing is coming up. And so we would prepare for that crossing. And then finally, we have an orange construction sign one more time.
If everyone went in the same direction at the same speed, we might not need rules, but people want to go in different directions at different speeds. Fortunately, there are traffic control devices that guide and inform us along our routes. Recognizing these signs, signals, and road markings can give you advance notice of changes ahead, such as lane merges, reductions in speed, and upcoming intersections. Knowing what traffic control devices mean allows you to anticipate and react to changing traffic conditions so that you can drive safely. First, let's discuss traffic signs. Signs are one of the easiest and quickest ways that drivers get useful information along their route. The use of different shapes and colors allows the sign's meanings to be easily recognized, even from a distance. For example, both the shape and color of this sign tell you to stop. As a rule, the color red indicates stop or identifies a significant prohibition, that is, something you cannot do. Black and white signs provide regulatory information. Their placement along the roadway also marks where the regulation actually goes into effect. Yellow signs provide warnings of potentially risky situations ahead. They alert you to curves, speed limit changes, railroad crossings, slippery roads, and other conditions that it helps to know about in advance. Yellow diamond-shaped warning signs might also appear before prohibition or regulatory signs to warn you of an upcoming change. There's no doubt that you'll find yourself driving through construction zones at some point. Yes, the construction equipment is usually a giveaway, but orange signs also identify construction zones. Begin to slow down to the reduced speed limit before you enter this zone. Green signs provide you with the distance or directions to cities, alternate routes, and other destination information. Blue signs provide service-related information, such as where to find food, lodging, fuel, hospitals, and handicap-accessible areas. Brown signs identify recreation facilities, such as parks, campgrounds, fishing sites, and boat launches. Fluorescent pink is the newest color to be added to the range of traffic sign colors, and it is used to identify incident management zones. These signs alert drivers to temporary work zones, emergencies, detours, and other unusual situations or traffic conditions. Clearly, the signs along the roadway are there for your benefit. They can help you get where you want to go more efficiently and warn you of any potential risks that are ahead. So use them for all their work. All right, this young lady is looking very upset. And if you can see outside of her window, she has been pulled over by a police officer. Maybe she didn't follow the regulations of a sign or a signal or something to that event. And now she is in a traffic situation. Um, she's giving us a very crabby look, if you will, or an upset look as this traffic ticket may cost her money. There may be a fine involved that could cost hundreds of dollars. Her insurance rates might go up or her driving privileges could be lost. So when we're out there on the roadways, we wanna make sure we know what these signs mean and what there we are supposed to do when we come up to these signs. Okay, so here's just a quick question that I'll have you write down on one of the pieces of paper that you are gonna turn in. And what does the yellow sign mean? Where would you find it? And then we're going to look at the red sign. And I would like you to tell me what the red sign is. All right, so this as it's marked with the yellow is showing us a yield sign. It requires drivers to yield the right away to vehicles approaching at an intersection if close enough to cause conflict or collision. What that means is the street we are on is coming into a busier street or one with more traffic that they want to move along more quickly. And so the traffic approaching does have the right of way. At that point, you would have to stop and wait or you would just slow and go when the time is opportune. And that is something that you'll work on when you do behind the wheel work with an instructor uh, to see where these signs are. You can also ask mom and dad too. When you see a yield sign, ask how they respond and what they're gonna do next. 
here is a do not enter sign. It prohibits drivers from traveling in certain directions or in specific sections of roadway. This is to help keep us safe, to make sure that we don't go the wrong way down a one-way street or maybe enter the expressway incorrectly. We can see that these signs are white squares with a red circle and a white bar that helps us to know that they are a regulatory sign. Uh, they can lead to the worst type of crashes. If we don't follow them, they could lead to a head-on collision as we would be going the wrong way against traffic. And we'll talk a little bit more about driving the wrong way down an intersection a little bit later on. These are prohib prohibition signs, which means we are prohibited from doing something. So here we can see this shows us no skateboards or no bicycles. Maybe this is on a specific sidewalk or a specific area. Again, here comes that no U-turn sign one more time, showing us that the cars, if there were cars coming along, they should not curve around that little median and head back the other way. There's a proper intersection to address going the opposite way on that roadway if necessary. This sign here means no trucks. So it may be a specific area where large vehicles are not safe to be on that roadway. So they've determined no truck passing is at uh, for this regulatory sign. And this one here, the final one is a no right turn. We might see that at an intersection where they would like us to not turn right for increased safety. Continuing on with regulatory signs, we can see that they're not always red and white. Uh, we can see here, as explained uh, in the description video earlier as well, that they are black and white. So we can see we have a speed limit of 50, the minimum of 30, uh, giving us directions of only a way we can go a specific way. Maybe no parking because there's a bus stop or walk on left facing traffic or they'll actually give us a weight lift weight limit if we happen to be a large size vehicle. Moving on, we have more regulatory signs here and we can see that there's a no parking sign no right turns, no trucks, no bicycles, as we saw before. They're just giving us another view of it here. And the one we didn't see before is no parking. So maybe we pull up to an area and it's not safe for us to park in a certain area. So they have a no parking sign here. And we're going to continue on. So this is a black and white picture here. And what I would like you to do is to write down what color the top sign should be. Uh, the color that it currently is is incorrect, but if we look at it and it says end road work, we would know that to be for a special area. So I'm going to ask that you write down what color should the end road work sign be in this picture here. And also too, I would like to know, is this picture correct? Is the black and white a regulatory color? And should it be black and white or should it be something else? Okay, we are going to give you the answer and give us a bright shiny picture. Hopefully you wrote down that the top sign should be orange and the bottom sign was black and white. Okay, we're going to continue on here to look at these signs. So I would like you to focus on the 7 East, Music Street, Bennington, and the downtown Troy. I would like you to tell me or write down what color those signs should be. And one more sign on the right here with the little box. It says exit 30 miles per hour. I am wondering what color that sign should be. And if you said the top two signs are green and the sign to the right is yellow, you were correct. So the top two signs are our information signs, helping us to figure out where to go on the roadway. 
And the sign on the right is a warning sign recommending that we uh, enter the exit ramp there at 30 miles an hour for increased safety. And we're going to do one more picture here. And again, I would like you to write down what color the top sign should be, where it says uh, trucks and commercial vehicles detour. Then the next sign down, that STOP sign, and then evacuation route. And if you guessed orange, red, and blue, you are correct. And we're going to look at this sign here. So I would like you to write down what color River Avenue should be, what color the right lane must turn right should be, and the chevrons down at the bottom. Write down what color those should be. And one more is going to be the hand up for the pedestrian crossing or the stop for pedestrian crossing. And I would like you to tell me what color that should be. And here are your answers. So river should be green, right lane should be white and black, the chevrons should be yellow and black, and the hand should be red or orange. Now we're going to look at the one-way street. Write down what color that should be. The do not enter, what color that should be. The do not turn and the no left turn should be a specific color. Please write down those colors. And if you answered, the one way should be black and white. The do not enter is red and white. And the no U-turn and no left turn are red, white, and black. You were correct. Okay, I would like you to write down what the pedestrian crossing color is. And then here we have a shoreline public access, so it's giving us recreational information. This sign here is a little difficult to see on the slide, but it's giving us information of a railroad crossing. This is a construction item, so what color would it be if it's for construction? And the tiny little no parking sign, what color should that be? And here are your picture, here is your picture, excuse me, in color. And I'm going to ask if you got all of those correct. And again, we have another slide. So I would like you to tell me, what color should this interstate four be? What color should notice left lane must turn left? Oh, we have another pedestrian crossing. What color should that be? And then it's very far out there, but it looks like it's giving us some direction or information. I'm not sure how well you'll see the slide on your computer. Um, my format is pretty small. And then in the distance, we have a Commerce Park Drive. What color should that sign be? And here they all are in color. I would like you to tell me, did you get them all correct? And we're coming into another one here. We have just a couple more slides, so we'll keep going. This one is a railroad crossing. What color would that be? If you would write that down for me. What color is the two hour parking limit? sign that's highlighted next. What color is 3rd Street going to be for a sign? 
the speed limit at 35, is that a correct color in black and white or would it have a different color? Stop on red signal, so we have information on a railroad crossing, what color would that be? And more railroad crossing information, what are the correct colors for those signs? And then the cross buck we have up in the air there, so obviously we don't have a train crossing anytime soon, but we have a cross buck up in the air. And one more hidden a little bit by the railroad crossing light is going to be looks like police information. So what color would that one be? And then a final one that's going to give us a little recreation sign. What color is recreation? With a final one of the pedestrian crossing. So that was a very big slide with a lot of sign information. You can also see when we get in downtown or city areas that we have a lot of signs. So we wanna work really, really hard to make sure we know what do our colors mean? What does the information mean? What is it trying to tell us and how do we respond? So that when we get out and drive behind the wheel, we can understand what all of these signs are trying to help us with to increase our safety behind the wheel. Here are a couple of warning signs. Uh, the one with the truck is showing us a steep grade ahead. And then we have pedestrian crossing. And up top where it says road work, again, that's a construction sign. So it's telling us that ahead, there's some information we need to know. And again, we're going to look at more construction zones pedestrian signs, and these orange ones are called incident management signs, or excuse me, not orange, but you can see that they are fluorescent pink. And so they are ones that might be put up, maybe uh, we had a bad storm and a tree fell across the road, so we don't wanna close the road down for a long period of time, but maybe for a couple hours while we we'll get something cleaned up. So they will put these fluorescent pink emergency signs out, address the road movement for a little while, and then clear them up when the situation is cleared up. Um, I have been driving for many, many years and I have only seen one of these signs. So they're not out very often, um, but they are a possibility. So we wanna make sure we know what they're about. Okay, there are common, three common types of intersection warnings you'll see. There are many others, but we're gonna look at these ones here to start. So first we have a crossroad. We have a T intersection, a Y intersection. We have a lane is being reduced when we look to the sign that's on the far left. The middle one is showing us it's a narrow bridge. So we would make sure that we would all fit on the bridge. And then we have a lane added. We potentially would see the one on the right when we're getting on an expressway knowing that a lane is coming in together. The one on the left here is showing us two-way traffic. That is helping us to understand that we are going to have cars going both ways on a roadway. The divided highway it begins shows us that there's going to be a separation and that our cars will be traveling with uh, potentially a barrier in the middle uh, for increased safety. The one far to the right it would be found most often at bridges or anywhere there might be uh, something coming over the intersection that would cause us to need to know the height of that bridge or cover so that trucks, large trucks or people traveling maybe with uh, camper trailers would know how tall it is and if they fit underneath. Here we can see we have pedestrian crossing, deer crossing, and well, if you're out in the country, maybe even farm machinery crossing. These ones are found all over the place uh, out there. There are signs where pavement ends, and that means once the pavement stops, you might come into what's called a gravel road or a dirt road or some other type of roadway, but there are the pavement will stop and the road conditions will change. In that situation, we likely will be slowing down, uh, increasing our awareness of what the area might have in place for us. 
and addressing the task as it comes. The slippery when wet, that might be when it's raining out or potentially if it's snowy. We want to know that that area might have increased conditions for being slippery. And then again, you can see steep hill ahead. They're showing a semi truck on this one, as a lot of times semi truck drivers have issues with going down steep hills. But it's a concern for us as well. We want to make sure we know we're safe and prepared for the hill. So when we see the sign, we prepare ahead of time to go down it safely. We can see here we have a right curve or an S curve or a reverse turn. So there's a lot of information that we have coming into play here with our warning signs. We're going to keep going. We want to make sure we know these signs all the way through. This one is a merge sign. So it's showing us that we need to merge onto the expressway or merge into an area going from the lane on the right where the little tail of the arrow is and coming into the main area. Merge signs at freeway entrances warn drivers and freeway on freeway and entering drivers. Drivers on both roadways should adjust speed and direction. In Michigan, we need to address the oncoming traffic that's on the expressway. We need to ask for permission. Uh, when you get behind the wheel and driving in the car, you will see that in individuals on the expressway have the right of way. And as we're merging on, to, we're using that yellow sign in the lanes for the entrance that we need to work together as a team and get safely onto the expressway. This again is a railroad warning sign. Uh, that's telling you that a railroad crossing is coming up. This is showing us that there is a railroad crossing right in front of us. It's usually within 50 or 100 feet of the crossing, um, so it's much closer. You can see the red lights. They're usually flashing at some of these intersections to warn us uh, that a train is there or within sight. The two tracks is very important in this sign to help us know there are two opportunities for a train on these tracks. So if we come up to an intersection and we see tracks, we want to make sure that both sets of tracks are clear if the sign on the right says two tracks ahead. This sign is for school crossing. And this is very important. It's a little different than just a regular pedestrian crossing and that we know that we're in a school zone, so they shape it a little differently. You'll notice it kind of looks like a house and the individuals have what seem to be bags. When I'm teaching out on the roadway, I tell my individuals that it's kind of like they're carrying a school bag to school to help us know the difference. And if you remember early on when we first started this section, I explained to you that there was a pennant on the roadway and we would see this on a special side of the road in that it's usually on the left side of the road of a two way street when most of our signs are on the right. This is telling us that there's a no passing zone ahead. When we see this one, we know that we need to get back over into our lane if we are uh, passing at this point in time because the road needs to move back over to a situation where it may, may not be safe. So this no passing zone pennant is usually found on the left side of a two way street. And at this time, we're going to stop on this slide here, but I do want to show you where the no passing zone is. So if we were the van on the right side, this is a kind of a poor picture uh, and showing us and that we are looking actually at a left turn lane. So of course we know we can't pass there, but it's showing you the pennant is on the left side. We also see on the right side, it says do not pass. So essentially it's telling us across the board, there is no passing here. And we're gonna stop there. We'll pick back up um, on another video with more signs.